if both sides matched, it would be 250 inches. A deer that had five drop tines and I was gonna pass him. I'm Kyle Cheney and this is the story of Ed. Um, so I first started getting Ed is before his name was Ed in 2018. Uh, I had a couple trail camera pictures of him in velvet and he was just a regular eight point, you know, nothing that sparked any interest. Um, so I kind of forgot about him that year. The next year came, um, no pictures of him, but like I said, I kind of forgot about the deer and that was 2019. At the end of 2019, it was actually the beginning of 2020. Um, I found Ed's sheds. Big eight point, um, 146 inches without an inside spread. So then I started getting a little interested. Um, so I started putting a few more trail cameras in the area. Uh, 2020 season came around, I was after some other bucks, but I still was trying to um, keep a camera where I found the sheds of Ed and uh, he never showed. No pictures, no nothing. Um, but I did hear some rumors of a deer getting shot close by that was supposedly 180 inch deer with some tickers. And, um, so I thought it could possibly have been him, um, but the deer lived. Um, I guess the, uh, the guy that shot him didn't make a great shot and the deer lived. But like I said, 2020, um, Ed was MIA. All right. Um, the spring of 2021, uh, my buddy Chris Biffle comes out from PA. He always hunts with me every year. Um, I let him hunt some of my spots. Uh, we go, we put a bunch of trail cameras out. Um, you know, I've got all my trail cameras out. He's got one left. I'm like, you know what? We probably need to put one where I found those sheds um, a couple years ago. So we took his trail camera out and uh, we put it on a trail that was coming out into this bean field um, along this big woods line. So. Like if, any, if there's any deer in here, they'll probably be using this this trail to come out into this bean field. Well, you know, a couple months goes by, you know, he's, you know, a bunch of his other tra trail cameras out here are getting good deer on it. He's like, hey, you need to go over there and move my trail camera. Um, I'm not getting any deer. I'm like, no, I'm like, that's a good spot. Let's just keep the trail camera there. Something, something eventually is gonna show up there. Like I, I can feel it. And um, a couple more months go by. He's like, man, I'm just getting, couple raccoons and I've got like two does. That's all I've seen this whole time on that trail camera. I feel like it's just a waste. I'm like, no man, leave it there. I'm like, we're gonna get something on that trail camera eventually. Something's gonna come through there. Well, season starts. Um, a couple days later, um, he sends me a picture and he sends me a picture of this deer and it has three or four drop tines. Uh, one side's really messed up. And I look at the picture and I'm like, man, that deer just looks really young. I'm like, uh, uh, I don't think that's going to be a shooter. And he's like, yeah, he's like, I, I agree. You know, he, he comes out like he hunts with me every year and he's very, um, very open to, to my, um, my discretion on what deer, you know, he can shoot, um, you know, which is really good, you know, cause you know, he helps manage my properties and helps the young ones get old. So, and you know, this was a really big deer and it probably would have been his biggest deer ever. And you know, when I said that deer is, is off limits, he, he was fine with it. Well, you know, we he keeps getting truck camera pictures of the deer day in and day out, of, all in daylight. Um, and he keeps sending them to me and we start getting a few truck camera pictures of him where he looks bigger than, and he looks bigger and older than like what he did when we first started getting trail camera pictures of him. But still, I'm like, man, I don't know if he's a shooter. My buddy Chris was like, man, I want to shoot him. And I'm like, I don't know. I'm like, he looks older than what I first thought. So I'm like, you know, I don't care, care if you shoot him. So he doesn't have time to come out and hunt or anything. And, um, you know, this time of the year, I had a lot of my up and comers got shot last year. So I didn't really have a deer to, to go out and hunt. So. I'm like, you know, I'm gonna go look at that deer. You know, we are still getting trail camera pictures of him coming out into the bean field. And um, so this was early October, by October 
sixth, seventh, eighth, one of those days I went out. My, I do a lot of hunting and hanging and I had a good wind for this tree I wanted to get set up in and the tree was about 80 yards from this trail that he was using to come out into the bean field. And I'm like, yeah, we'll go see if he comes out tonight. So I go there and I sit and about 5.30 he comes out and I'm looking at him and I'm like, man, he is way bigger than I thought. Like double the size that I actually thought he was. And I'm sitting there looking at him and I'm videoing him and I'm watching him for about 15 minutes. And he, uh, the wind switches just a little bit, just for like five seconds. And he gets a whiff of me but he's not sure which way it came from because the wind did a swirl. So he's looking all around. He just knows something's not right. And he ends up walk, starting to walk back into the woods. And at this point, I'm like, I need to kill this deer. Like, this is a shooter deer. I'm being dumb right now. I need to get an arrow in this thing. So I'm like trying to range him as he's walking back into the woods and I'm trying to draw and range. And I'm like, he walks into the woods and stops. And he, I'm like, there's trees in the way and I'm like I blew it I'm like I just blew it I'm like I should have shot this deer when he was standing out in the field like I just blew it he walks into the woods so I'm sitting there and you know I texted Chris and told him that I just seen him and um, anyway a couple hours go by it's starting to get dark and a couple hundred yards down he pops out uh, back into the bean field so I'm like oh, I must not have scared him too bad um, you know he's he's out there milling around you know and it starts getting dark and um, he starts heading my way, but I know he's coming my way, and I know by the time he gets to me, it's going to be too dark to take a shot or too dark to get it on video, and I didn't want to be getting down out of the tree with him. Um, I, I didn't want him to see me getting down out of the tree, so there was probably 20 minutes of light left. I got down, and I got out of there because you know I wanted to put a strategy together for the next day to uh, go in and kill him the next day. So day two, um, you know, I'm only hunting evenings uh, for this deer. You know, it is early October. Um, I, so I, I've told a couple people, you know, about this deer and I, I told them, you know, where I seen him and I'm thinking about trying to get set up on him on day two, but I'm not really sure how to do it because where he's coming out of the woods, there's no trees for me to get set up on. I don't want to go into the woods and, and disturb him. That's the last thing I want to do. Like he's we're getting daylight pictures of this deer almost every day. You know, I do not want to step into that woods. So there's no trees on the tree line for me to sit up in. And I actually went, went into a couple bow stores and, you know, I was just kind of messing around. I think I bought some arrows or something. And, you know, I'm talking to this guy and um, he's like, I, I, to, I kind of told him my situation. He's like, yeah, just sit on the ground right there by, by where he comes out. And then I had, a, I'm like, okay, I'm like, eh, I don't know. And then I had another guy tell me the same thing. He's like, well, you know, if I didn't have a tree to sit in, I'd just sit on the ground. And I knew better than to sit on the ground, but I went in there and I'm standing there. And I walk in and there's like a tree that fell down about 40 yards just south downwind of where he usually walks out. And I could sit in the bean field, like right behind this tree and be facing where he usually walks out. But I sat there and I looked for about 30 minutes before I actually, cause I had my tree stand with me, just in case I wanted to get up in a tree. And I looked at it and I looked at it and I looked at it and I knew it was a bad idea. For like 30 minutes I contemplated, I just stood in one spot and I knew it was a bad idea. But I'm like, ah, people kill deer off the ground all the time, but I knew better. So anyway, I sat on the ground like an idiot and I'm facing where he usually comes out. I have my camera like propped up on the on the log. A couple does come out um, of the trail. He comes out, and you know they're messing around in the bean field. And um, the time he usually comes out passes. 5:30 passes. 6:30 passes. And I'm like, man, maybe, maybe he's just not going to come out tonight. Or maybe somehow the wind switched one time. He winded me or maybe he heard me come in. And I'm like, I, I don't know. Maybe he's not coming out because usually we'd had him come out by this time. Well, a couple minutes later, I hear something behind me. And I turn my head real slow. And there he is. He's standing behind me, 20 yards behind me. He just steps out into this field. 
and I'm, I can't turn, I can't do nothing because he's sitting there looking at me. We have a stare off for 10 seconds and he turns around and jumps into the woods and I, I was dumbfounded. I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. I just ruined this deer. I'm like this deer is going to go nocturnal. I'm never going to see this deer again. Um, if I'd have been sitting in the tree, I was the night before I'd have had a 40 yard shot at him. You know, I'd be dragging this deer out of the woods right now, but instead I'm getting up 30 minutes early and walking out pretty mad. You know, I don't know if he's going to come back out, but I'm not going to stop. So day, day three, I wake up in the morning, super early. Um, I set my target up at 80 yards. Um, I'm like, I'm going to go back to the tree where I first saw him the first day and I'm going to be ready. I'm going to shoot him at 80 yards. So I wake up that morning, I get my RX-4 out, I put my deer target uh, behind my house at 80 yards, hammer every shot. Probably put 50 shots into this deer at 80 yards. Never missed a pie plate the whole time. Like every shot would have been a kill shot. I'm like, this deer's dead. He steps out, or if he comes in the same spot he did um, the first day, he's a dead deer. So I get back up in the tree um, where I first saw him the first day. I'm sitting there and I'm sitting there and I'm sitting there. No deer at all. Like 5.30 comes, 5.45, 6 o'clock, 6.15, 6.30. And by then, like I at least expect a doe to be coming out of this field. Nothing, I see no deer. The wind is great. I don't have a bad wind. Just no deer coming into this field. I didn't don't know what's going on. It gets dark and I get skunked. Not one deer, I don't see one deer. And I don't know what happened. I know from me sitting on the ground the night before, there's no way I could have scared every deer in this woods, but that's what was going through my head. Day four rolls around and um, I'm trying to come up with a new strategy. Um, what to do. So day four, I'm like, you know what? I'm just gonna throw day four away. Um, I'm gonna sit in an observation set in the middle of a field um, where there's this fence line, but from this fence line, I can see 50% of this woods, a part of this field that's grass where the farmer didn't plant. So I can see that and it's green and I can see a bean field off to my right, the bean field that he was always coming out into. And I can see a bean field off to my left. Um, and the bean field off to my left actually was still green because um, they planted it late because they had winter wheat in it early. So as I'm sitting there, you know, I knew I'm not going to be able to kill a deer because I'm 500 yards away from the woods, but at least can see if he comes out or if deer come out and where they're going. So as I'm sitting there, I'm starting to realize, and I have my camera with me and I go back and review the footage of the day I seen him. When he was in the bean field the first day, the field was brown, but there was still a little bit of green in the beans. Well, that field had totally turned brown. Like in those couple days, that field was completely brown. There was no more green in it. Well, so I'm like, well, that may explain why I didn't see any deer the night before. So I'm like, I started having some hope that night. Like maybe the deer transferred to this other field that still has beans in it that are green. Well, I was right. Some does start funneling out, some little bucks. Um, but no Ed. Ed doesn't come out um, at all. About three minutes till till dark, um, he comes out of the woods. I, I get a glimpse of him coming out of the woods and he starts um, feeding on the grass um, halfway between the field where I first saw him and, and, the, and the beans that were still green. He starts feeding in this grass and uh, I'm like, okay, perfect. I, start, I check the weather for the next day, another great day, a perfect wind to set up on this grass where he just came out into. I'm like, if he comes out again, I'll be able to get a shot on him. Day five, um, I go out um, to hunt Ed. I have a great plan. I have a tree picked out. I know the woods very well, so I know pretty much every tree in the woods. I know where I'm gonna set up on him. I know where he beds. Um, I know the area that he's bedding in. So knowing where he beds, it's way easier for me to pick a tree out for if he's gonna come to this green grass field. So I'm walking in and there's construction workers working in um, in this grass field. Like it's not construction workers, but it's the farmer. So the, the farmers are putting in a field tile right through the grass that Ed was eating in that night. So 
I sit there for a little bit and I, I'm trying to make another plan. Like I said, I already had that plan ironed out in my head. Well, it wasn't gonna work. So I sit there for a while and I, I start, I kind of trying to figure out which way the wind's gonna be blowing all night. Um, so then I remember that green bean field that was off to the left. So I'm like, maybe they'll be coming to that green bean field because where the, that green beans were, the wind was blowing into the woods and it was actually blowing right to where his bed was, right to where he was bedding, um, the area that I knew he was bedding in. So I'm like, I can make that work. Since I knew where he bedded, I could get, I could get into that fence row or into that woods row and he wouldn't be able to win me coming from his bed. Um, he'd be able to come to that green bean field with the wind in his face and still not be able to win me because of the cross went. So I'm like, if any night I'm gonna kill him, it's gonna be tonight. Like, I really think he's gonna do it. So I walk down there, I walk in, um, there's a creek that's running inside this woods. Um, there's like a big ravine um, like that runs along the creek. I find the easiest spot um, for Ed to cross the creek. So I'm like, you know, with him being injured, injured, he's not just gonna wanna cross the creek anywhere. So I find the easiest spot for him to cross. You know, uh, there's a big deer trail there that other deer have been, been using. So I find a tree just, you know, um, downwind of, of that spot. Um, and I get set up like this is a perfect spot. He's gonna have to come right to this creek if he wants to get out of this bean field. He's not gonna be able to win me and he's still gonna have the wind um, in his nose. So, you know, he'll feel like he's he's got the advantage for, for that, that evening. And anyway, I'm sitting there. Um, it starts getting time where, you know, we're starting, we usually get pictures of Ed getting up um, out of his bed and I have a doe come in. Um, the doe comes in and I don't know how she saw me. She didn't smell me, but she saw me. Um, she looks up in the tree and she didn't know what I was, but she knew I wasn't supposed to be there. Um, she doesn't blow. She's trying to get me to move. I don't move. She's doing everything she can um, to make me move so she can see what I am. Well, she doesn't blow. A couple minutes later, um, a little buck comes in. And the little buck that's, that comes in is the buck that always hangs out with Ed. Every time I've seen Ed, I've seen this little buck with him. So he comes in and, and he sees the does on alert. Um, but at this point, I think he thinks rut's almost coming and he starts messing with the doe and the doe's like leave me alone there's something in this tree I'm trying to figure it out and uh, the little buck's still messing with the doe the doe's trying to bust me I can't move like I can't grab my bow I can't turn the camera on I literally can't I'm not even turning my head like I'm trying to move my eyes to keep track of this doe so I, I know where she goes um, like look, if I could be a statue I was a statue with only my eyes moving because I knew if she blew it was over with and I knew Ed was coming I knew for a fact Ed was about to come because he had the wind at his advantage he's always with this little buck this this field is still green well a couple minutes later here comes Ed right from his bed like the, the area he was bedding in just like I thought comes right down to him and he's walking straight towards this creek crossing and I can't move. I can't grab my bow. I can't turn the camera on. The doe is literally at the bottom of my tree with her head pointed straight up at me. Like she is waiting on me to move. And I knew at this moment, like it was do or die for him. Like if she blew, game over. Um, it was it, you know, that was that would be it. So Ed kept coming, she didn't blow. I knew I was gonna have one opportunity to get the shot done. Um, he comes in front of me about 20 yards. Um, there's a, a big oak tree that his head got behind and I knew when he got his head got behind it, I could grab my bow real fast and in one motion, you know, get the bow around, get hooked up and get pulled back. And that's exactly what I did. I didn't ever even stood up, just grabbed the bow, one motion, pulled back. He steps out from behind the oak tree um, and at this point, the doe runs, like does a little couple bounces. Um, he looks over at the doe, but you know, I think he thinks the reason the doe bounced is because of the other little buck that was messing with her. So he doesn't even care. He goes, uh, steps a couple more steps. Um, I release my arrow at 15 yards, double lung, perfect shot. Um, blood everywhere on impact. He makes it 40 yards and, and 
is dead within seven seconds. Um, so I can see him. I can see him from my tree stand. He was only 40 yards. Um, is where he expired. So I got down from the tree, um, walked over to him, and he was way bigger than I thought um, when I first seen him. Like he was 30 inches bigger than what I thought. His one side, his left side, was so big. Like I, I knew he was a big deer, but I did not know he was that big. Um, definitely no ground shrinkage there. You know, after after I got him got him back and got him cut up and um, took him to the taxidermist, I had Buckmasters score him. Um, he said the one side was 115 inches, the other side was 52, um, with a I'm not great at math, but I think it was it was an over over a 20 inch inside spread. He ended up being uh, 189 and a little bit of change.